Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to discuss about hypotony maculopathy. Hypotony is defined as intraocular pressure less than 6.5 mm of mercury, that is 3 standard deviations below mean IOP. Clinically, hypotony is defined as IOP low enough to result in vision loss. The vision loss from low IOP can be due to corneal edema, astigmatism, cystoid macular edema or hypotony maculopathy. Hypotony maculopathy is defined as low IOP associated with fundus abnormalities like chorioretinal folds, optic nerve head edema in acute setting and vascular tortuosity. Now let us discuss the etiology of hypotony maculopathy. It may occur after ocular inflammation, trauma or surgery. Most cases are secondary to glaucoma filtration surgery especially with the use of antifibrotic agents. The causes of post-operative hypotony include MMC toxicity of ciliary body, overfiltration, bleb leak, wound leak, iridocyclitis, cyclodialysis, ciliocoroidal detachment, and retinal detachment. Traumatic hypotony can be due to scleral perforation, retinal detachment, cyclodialysis, iridocyclitis, and ciliocoroidal detachment. Bilateral hypotony can occur due to osmotic dehydration, diabetic coma, uremia, and myotonic dystrophy. Miscellaneous causes of hypotony maculopathy include ciliary body hypoperfusion from vascular occlusive disease. The risk factors for hypotony maculopathy include male gender, myopia, young age, primary glaucoma filtration surgery, use of antifibrotic agents. The risk is especially higher with mitomycin C, and elevated preoperative intraocular pressure. Coming to the pathophysiology of hypotony maculopathy, with the onset of hypotony, the scleral wall collapses inward, resulting in choroid and retina redundancy, which gives the characteristic chorioretinal wrinkling. Anteroposterior diameter of eye shortens, leading to refractive hyperopic shift. There will be anterior bowing of lamina cribrosa in optic nerve, which leads to restricted axoplasmic flow causing disc swelling in acute phase. Coming to the clinical features of hypotony maculopathy, the patients may complain of distortion in their central vision or they may be completely asymptomatic. Examination findings include IOP less than 6.5 mm of mercury, painless decreased vision, hyperopic shift in refraction, and fundus changes like chorioretinal folds, vascular tortuosity, and optic disc swelling. This picture shows a case of hypotonus maculopathy with chorioretinal folds. Now let us discuss the diagnostic procedures done for a case of hypotony maculopathy. Ultrasound biomicroscopy can be done to visualize anatomical structures posterior to iris. OCT can be done. It is helpful in diagnosis and monitoring response to treatment. This picture shows OCT of a case of hypotonus maculopathy showing chorioretinal folds. FFA can be done and it will show an increase in choroidal fluorescence at the crest of choroidal folds due to thinning of RP. B scan can be done to rule out choroidal detachment or retinal detachment. Coming to the medical and conservative management of hypotony maculopathy, we have to identify the underlying etiology and treat it appropriately. For bleb leak, the conservative management options include aqueous suppressants, topical antibiotics or bandage contact lens. We can also use cyanoacrylate glue, autologous blood injection, and compression sutures. For overfiltering bleb, we have to do quick tapering regimen of topical steroids, autologous blood injection. We can use laser to stimulate inflammation, diathermy, trichloroacetic acid, and compression sutures to minimize aqueous outflow. When there is hypotony due to uveitis and hyposecretion, we have to give corticosteroids to reduce inflammation and improve ciliary body function. Topical cycloplegics should be given to relax iris and ciliary body, reducing the potential space for subciliary effusions. Now let us discuss the surgical management of hypotony maculopathy. Surgery is undertaken immediately in cases of trauma, including scleral rupture or retinal detachment. In other etiologies, surgery is undertaken if conservative management fails. For overfiltering bleb, bleb excision and revision using either conjunctival advancement approach or free conjunctival autograph is undertaken. 
vitrectomy can be done in unresolving chorioretinal folds. ILM peel causes elimination of contractile forces from subclinical fibrocellular proliferation. PFCL can be used to steamroll retina flat by temporarily increasing intraoperative IOP to 50 mm of mercury. Coming to the prevention of hypotony maculopathy, antimetabolites should be used judiciously during trabeclectomy. We should avoid contact between antifibrotic agents and conjunctival edges. Multiple scleral flaps should be put to titrate and control aqueous humor flow to avoid excessive filtration. Incorporation of Tenon's capsule with conjunctiva during closure should be done and utilization of tapered needles to reduce the risk of post-operative blood leaks. Laser suture laces should be timed appropriately in the post-operative period to avoid abrupt reduction in IOP. Coming to the prognosis of hypotony maculopathy, Timely normalization of low IOP may restore scleral and retinal anatomy. In long standing cases, there can be development of intraretinal fibrosis and fibrosis within sclera and choroid. This can cause permanent structural and functional damage even with resolution of etiology. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments section. For more such videos, please check out my playlists. Thank you.